G'day everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls and I'm Ross and uh, believe it or not, I'm building a 40 foot, four bedroom, two bathroom, foam core sailing catamaran from uh, composite foam core material. So uh, I'm three years into the build and I'll just show you a few photos of the boat that I'm planning to build. The last one that came out of this mold was a power cat and it's a beautiful boat. I'm really heading towards a production like finish and, uh, and I hope you'll continue along with my series. Basically, don't forget to subscribe to this video and very importantly, please like it and make a comment. It won't get recommended out to other boat builders and anyone that's interested in catamaran and sailing. So don't forget to uh, swap over to the composite shop, which is my other channel where I actually go into depth into build composite phone core products as well. So there's quite a lot of information there. Let's get straight into it. This week, I'm going to be laminating the engine bay bulkheads. Very important. And also I'm going to start to laminate the foam core engine bolsters that are going to take my beautiful Yanmar 4JH57 motors. So lots to do. Let's get it done. What's that? It's cut. What are we doing today? <laughs> All right, what we're gonna to do today, that bed base down there, and I'll show you a picture of that, is over the top of our engine bays. Sam and I have just been up the factory and we've made a template. So we now have a, a template of our engine mounts, and we're gonna basically get that bed out of there and then get the module out once we've tested that this is gonna actually all work. And then I'm gonna get that engine bay module out put it out here, start reinforcing it with the consideration that I'm going to basically laminate and complete the reinforcement of the engine mounts. That's got a pretty major thing because I've got to get these done before I can even consider demolding. And, uh, but yeah, Sam's gone and measured all this. We've got these ready to go. This is showing our engine holes. We're hoping that's gonna all fit and we'll get on with it. We'll find out. We will. All right, so we've got down in here, we've got our engine mounts, and these are um, beautiful Australian hardwood engine mounts. And the good thing about these is that I can actually tap thread these with the lag screws that are going to hold them in. So the screws are going to actually screw into this. They're not gonna be very long. They don't need to be very long, more than about one and a half inches long into here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to rebuild this and then ultimately I'll cosmetically repair this or remove it as I need to, to make sure that it's going to fit. But for now, let's just see how this fits. We don't know which was the front or the back, do we? It doesn't matter. Take... All right, so there's our engine um, footprint. And that's spot on, isn't it? Hopefully. Yeah, that, that's absolutely perfect. That's really good. So let's go back to the original problem I had was the original boat that was made had engine mounts around here somewhere, which were fine. I've had to cut away this section here to allow for the foam bracing. And, and it, alternatively, it used to actually mount on the hull itself on some wooden bearers that were glass to the actual um, hull. But because I've gone for a newer, more advanced engine, guess what? It's smaller. And that's why we now have this problem where I'm, it's sort of overhanging this void. So I've had to bolster it with foam and I've done a heap of uh, shaping in previous episode and I'll give you a link back to that now. I'll just show you me shaping all the foam that's now glued onto the whole side here. And then we've fashioned the timber bearer. Got that separate. And that's going to be, this foam here is going to be glassed to the hull with about eight layers of 600 double bias. And then the bearer itself will be glassed to the foam, giving me a really super strong um, substrate with which to mount the engine onto. And hopefully that foam will absorb some of the vibration that you'd normally get in the engine as well. So I'm trying to minimize noise as I go through this whole process. But for now, now that I know that this fits and I'd never done this test, I'd only ever done it with rough measurements, but that's just spot on, that's gonna be amazing, mate. If you think about the motors this high, that gives us over one and a half feet of clearance underneath the bed for access through the top. There'll be access through the back, and I may even have access through the front there so I can get to the belts and things that are up in the front, so. 
I'm going to start working on this. Now Sam's here today, help me, we're going to get this engine bait out and uh, and probably get the other one out as well and that way I can just career ahead with reinforcing these firstly, secondly doing the engine mounts. To get these blasted in, in the next month or so would be my target to have the bulkheads put in and then I can start concentrating on on uh, the deck after I come back from a couple of weeks sailing in the wet Sundays. Hopefully. <laughs> Provided they don't lock us down again. Right, uh, let's do it mate, hey? All right. Good stuff. Port engine bays, I won't be able to mess up. Look at the grubby, grotty. So this is all gonna get reinforced now that I've uh, got this out. It's nice having a bit of help around, I'll tell ya. Poor old Johnny's having a day off today. So we're down now in the starboard side. I'm gonna basically do both engine bays concurrently now that I've sort of dealt with the hoo-ha up there. But uh, getting up and down, I'm about to become a bilge rat again, and I think I've got another month or two down in the bilges working on the engine mounts. Uh, deeply worried about having to climb again. So now we're going to uh, lift this bed base out and reveal the engine bay in there. up here in the store and so far I've got the rear template I've got both the uh, bed bases here I've got the main center bulkhead one of the engine bays and this is my master suite up in here which is not being used at the moment there's no one sleeping here and if I don't get this boat finished I might be here permanently So revealing the engine bay modules by lifting them out, it's actually going to reveal the stuff that was hidden by the module. Behind that, as I've filleted all of these in, I've got massive globules of stuff. What I should really have done was lifted the engine bay modules out, filleted it in both sides of this bulkhead rather than sort of thinking, I'll get to it later and I'll show you what I mean. There's massive lumps of epoxy and, uh, and fillet that's squeezed on the other side because the other side's absolutely perfect, but this side isn't. So there's gonna be a lot of sanding, a lot of sort of, you know, detail work to get this all tied in. And I want this perfect. I don't want to sort of think, oh, just because I'm hiding it behind an engine bay module, I can get away with it. That's not how I work. I like to make sure that I get it right. So I'll just show you what I mean. And I've already been working away here for around about an hour to tidy up the mess that I made. And I've got quite a lot of work to do here before I can even think about putting in the fillets. And then I'm gonna start working in this engine bay. So what I'm alluding to here is because all of this was hidden by that, um, that module that sits in there, you can see here that there's quite a mess here. So this is all being now sanded and tidied up. And particularly along here where I have the bulkhead under the floor, this is the riser and then the floor itself and then the bulkhead. I've got a lot of excess filleting here. You can see how it's oozed out. Now what I intend to do is tie this all in as one complete piece so that it's technically monocoque and separate to the engine room altogether. And therefore I've got a very, very high, high structural strength here. I've got a lot of different um, sort of lateral and vertical uh, members going there to obviously reinforce and uh, and increase the strength and without tying in too much weight but yeah lots of mess here all of this is going to be filleted and tabbed again so that I make sure that I've got you know ultimately the most uh, the neatest possible finish I can get and right even up here into the bedside table or the side of the bed I intend to give that a good clean up 
uh, refill it and then I'll go again. So while I was down here, I got the tabbing completed on the uh, reverse side of my bedroom bulkhead of the engine bay bulkhead. So get this peel ply off. And just to examine the sort of strength that I'm working on here, I've got, okay, let's have a look at this profile here. I've got the rear bunk. This is actually the stern cabin bed bunk. And then I've got the floor, the riser, and then the bulkhead again, all glued with epoxy. So there's four layers there glued together and then two layers of 600 double bias over the top. I think it'll do. <laughs> I think it's more than enough. That's a pretty strong joint there. I mean, it doesn't get any stronger than that. That engine bay now is ready for uh, laminating over those foam bolsters so I can get my bearers in place just another massive step in the grand scheme of things here hate to tell you but i'm back in the build <laughs> i've been down here for a few days and uh, and then tomorrow what i intend to do is come in and start to laminate the engine beds which are foam down here obviously they're the ones i shaped uh probably about six or seven months ago i gave them a good shape might even be more than that i've lost track of time you know this covid um uh, bloody aura that I'm in at the moment. Who knows, I don't even know what day it is. But these engine beds here are basically glued on uh, with epoxy onto the walls of the skeg down in here. Now they need to be rounded off. I've just spent a good hour or so with my roller sander and an orbital giving them a good clean up. And you can see the edges of them along, along this edge here. And then over on here, you can see along there, there's actually a rounded edge there. There's no point in having a 90 degree angle um, trying to laminate um, woven fabrics or you know stitch fabrics. In fact, I'm gonna be using 600 and 1200 double bias on here. I'm going for uh, a sort of a scantling of around about six millimeters, which is a pretty serious laminate, but you know, it's gonna hold over th around 250 kilos of engine. So I do need to make sure these are pretty sound. Now there's been a lot of effort uh, coving and sort of getting those those uh, those flanges and basically the, the radius here and a fillet all pretty much so there's not gonna be ever any air bubbles. And what I'll do is I will actually overlap the laminates. So I'll have one that'll end about here, 
another one that'll end a little bit further up the wall, and then another one even further up so that I'm getting three or four layers of, of bite onto the hull at every stage. And then on top of that is going to be the wooden bearer. So I've just come back up into my factory. The engine um, bolsters that I've got there are foam core. There's actually five layers of 30 mil foam epoxy together into one block. First layer I'm gonna put on as a tie layer is going to be 300 CSM. And the reason why I do that is because I can hot coat that on onto the foam, make sure that I get a good um, adhesion to the foam. And then secondly, I'll then put a layer of 600 and then another layer of 300 and then I can go with subsequent layers of 600. And I'm basically planning to put on uh, at least four layers onto each side and then I'm gonna test the thickness and, uh, and provided I get to around five to six millimeters before I then put the engine bearers on, I think I'll be good. I think that scantly is gonna be more than enough. I've taken a lot of advice from a couple of books that I've read and, uh, and you know, working on uh, some advice I've had from other boat builders, but that's the plan. So I'm gonna get cutting uh, 70 centimeters long by 110 uh, in width is the size because I need to allow for a lot of overlap and that's the first couple of layers done. Okay, so just come up to check my progress. Uh, this one was laminated Friday Arvo, and yet that's perfect. That's uh, rock solid, buddy. All right, so these are nice and hard now. They come up really nice. They're gonna have a bit more reinforcing before I glue the bearers onto them. But yeah, I'm gonna do, uh, do this one, get these ones done. But there, that looks pretty good. And you'll be down there for many more days yet. It's not over till the fat lady sings. Until the fat lady floats. It'll float. <laughs> She's gonna be a fat lady. You'll be right, plenty of foam in it. <laughs> She's gonna be a fatty, you know, Lots of buoyancy. <laughs> <laughs> 